Tonight on News 13. Residents in Mahanoy are saying there was an ongoing drug problem here. I'll have that story coming up. Police in Luzerne County finally collared this Hazelton man after he sold a stash of heroin. I'll tell you how they caught him. Hazelton General receives a special award for their work in helping bring awareness to child prematurity. I'll have that story. This is News 13 Now. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to News 13 Now. I'm Kathy Bozinski. The people who live in Mahanoy City say they're scared and disgusted by the increasing drug trade in their town. They say it's ruining their community, but as Matthew Petrillo tells us, drug problems aren't unique to just Mahanoy. Mahanoy City is celebrating its 150th anniversary this year, but a lot has changed in this old coal town from the days when the sidewalks were crowded with people and the downtown bustled with shops. There's a lot of stores being robbed for drugs. There's People in the streets. Yeah, I think they have a drug problem. It's a problem police in Mahanoy are trying to eradicate with help from the district attorney's office and the county sheriff. It's a very serious issue. Nobody wants drugs in their community. Councilwoman Patty Snitches says drug problems plaguing towns extends way beyond Mahanoy. But it's nationally. It's in all small, small towns. It's in large cities. It's not something that is strictly for our community. It's unfortunate that it's anywhere, but it's pretty much everywhere. A study published last month shows she's right, and the problem is growing. Over the last 20 years, police have in large part failed in curtailing the so-called war on drugs. The $350 billion a year trade in illegal narcotics continues as the price of drugs declines and the potency of those drugs is on the rise. The study, published by the International Center for Science and Drug Policy, shows the prices of heroin and cocaine have decreased by about 80% in the U.S. between 1990 and 2007 with inflation adjusted. The price of marijuana, it shows, decreased by 86%. The study also shows the potency of marijuana increased by 161%. The reason behind it? Economics 101. If you have a growing number of suppliers right, and a demand which is significant um, but not overwhelming the supply, what you're going to find is drop in price, you know, increase in, uh, in, in potency. Dr. Evans says the best way to reduce drug problems is to stop criminalizing it. And in Pennsylvania, that could happen to marijuana. State Senator Mike Fulmer, a Republican from Lebanon County, is co-sponsoring a bill to legalize marijuana here. But it still needs a lot more support from Republicans before any change can happen. Matthew Petrillo, News 13, Mahanoy. A Hazleton man is behind bars tonight now that police tracked him down after he took off during a drug buy in Kingston. Police say 28-year-old Ariel Alvarez of South Poplar Street sold 12 bricks of heroin on a street corner in a residential neighborhood in Kingston, Luzerne County. When drug agents moved in to arrest him, Alvarez sped off through a parking lot in his SUV. He dumped the car and hid in the basement of a home until the owner came home and found him there. He got away again, but police finally captured him along Pier Street in Kingston, where they say he was throwing away the money from the drug buy as he walked. Police say the street value of that heroin is about $12,000. Alvarez in the Luzerne County Correctional Facility on a slew of drug and resisting arrest charges. Well, if you live in Pottsville, get your calculators ready. The city wants your help crunching the numbers to figure out the best way to spend your tax dollars. While they're still in the process of ironing out the 2014 budget, city officials are inviting the public to attend two meetings and give input on the spending plan. The first budget work session will be at 3 p.m. this coming Monday in the conference room on the second floor of City Hall. There will be a second budget work session in the same place at 3 p.m. on Thursday. But what, where we are at so far is that each department head uh, and you know council person has submitted back to us a, a budget for 2014. And we always, of course, always ask the budgets to be you know, conservative but realistic so that we can you know, provide the services that we need to provide. So our, our first workshop on Monday, we're going to be hashing out those first initial look at the budget just to sort of see where we're at. Palomar is encouraging everybody to take a look at the budget items before the meetings, some issues in the budget, updating old city equipment, dealing with the rising cost of health care, and trying to fix the city's ongoing pension crisis. Well, being a new parent is a tough job that starts even before your baby is born. As Christina Papa explains, in conjunction with Prematurity Awareness Month, Hazleton General Hospital has received a special award for their work in preventing premature births. Ten fingers and ten toes, two-day-old baby Jade was born healthy and strong. 
Jade's strong lungs are thanks in part to her mom's proper prenatal care. I ate healthy. I drank, stayed away from, you know, caffeine. I uh, took prenatal vitamins. Went to doctor's visits every um, four weeks and then two weeks and then one week. With thousands of babies born every day, some will have complications. The best way to ensure a baby is born in good health, a full-term pregnancy. According to the Center for Disease Control and March of Dimes in 2012, 12.8% of babies born in the U.S. were premature. That's about 500,000 babies. A mom's uh, ability to deliver a healthy baby on time as opposed to early can affect um, that baby's health for the rest of its life. To help raise awareness and in recognition of Prematurity Awareness Month, Hazleton General Hospital's Family Birthing Center staff recently received a special award from the March of Dimes. The goal of the March of Dimes is, of course, education. Um, to get moms who are pregnant to get to their health care provider, to get good prenatal care very early in the beginning. Some reasons for prematurity are unknown, but there are lifestyle changes a mother can make to lower the risk of having a premature birth. And not smoking, because smoking can affect pregnancy. Poor nutritional status, uh, using street drugs, sometimes it could be uh, familial, it runs in the family. Moms-to-be can contact Hazleton General for more information on prenatal classes. Christina Papa, News 13, Greater Hazleton. Still ahead on News 13 now, a few showers but not a bad weekend to maybe put up those Christmas decorations outside. A weekend warm-up in News 13 weather. And speaking of Christmas. If you've driven down 309 in the morning before, you may have seen this man. But do you know who he is? We'll tell you coming up. You're watching News 13 now, local and loving it. It's a pretty curious sight. As the holiday season arrives, so did a very familiar looking man. If your morning commute takes you through Mountaintop, you know who we're talking about. Christina Papa unravels the mystery of the secret Santa who travels Route 309. In Mountaintop, Santa Claus comes to town every day. But that's not really St. Nick under that red cap. His real name is Bob Anderson. AKA Santa Claus. <laughs> He and his wife Deborah walk on the side of 309 through Mountaintop together. More recently, Bob's big red cap and white beard have grabbed the attention of drivers passing through town. It's real. They usually beep the horn and holler <laughs> wave. But Bob and Deborah really started walking for the exercise. I'm the leader. Is he slow? Deborah has had eight surgeries on her feet and Bob has had four heart attacks. So to help keep healthy, Deborah started walking and eventually got her husband to tag along. Try to make things better, because when I first started walking, I couldn't go two blocks without being out of breath. Now I'm going almost three miles, three and a half miles a day. 309 is a busy roadway with very few pedestrians walking by. Bob says even before he put on the hat, people would beep and yell. That's when Mr. Anderson decided to make his walk down 309 more than just an exercise routine. One day we were doing it and the kids started hollering, hey, Santa Claus, so I put a hat and some gloves on and started waving. There we go. <laughs> he brings smile, like I said, to everybody's face. Everybody talks about him. Everybody from all on 309 beep and wave to him. But it hasn't all been good reaction. I get some bad ones that don't like Santa Claus. He should be home making toys. <laughs> it doesn't seem to bother Bob or Deborah. Some of them think I'm crazy, but if I can put one smile on the face dead a day, it, hey, it brightens up the day. I think it's great. It, makes him happy, you know what I mean? And it's good for the people. Once he saves up enough money, Bob says he plans on buying a Santa suit. But for now, he says he'll continue walking and waving. Christina Papa, News 13, Mountaintop. Time now for News 13 Weather. In tonight's weather shot, we are local and loving it in Mountaintop, where it was a beautiful day with the sun reflecting on the pond at the park along Ice Lake Drive. Checking the National Weather Service radar, not much to see here. 
A couple things going on maybe to our north, but not around these parts. Just mostly cloud cover, and that's what will allow for temperatures to kind of stay warm this weekend. But we will see a few showers, but not that many to speak of. Here's News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton for tonight. Mostly cloudy with a low around 35 degrees. And for Saturday, partly sunny and pretty nice, a high up to 51. Slight chance of showers at night with a low around 41. And for Sunday, mostly cloudy. There will be a chance of showers with a high pushing 60, near about 58, 59 degrees. Showers at night with a low only down to 49. And for Monday, showers likely in the morning. Then it becomes partly sunny with a high near 54. Partly cloudy at night with a low down to 30. And then for Tuesday, mostly sunny, but it gets chilly again with a high near 38 degrees. Heading to Schuylkill County for tonight, mostly cloudy with a chance of light rain, a low around 39. Then for Saturday, mostly cloudy, high up to 54. Slight chance of showers during the overnight with a low down to 42 degrees. For Sunday, Mostly cloudy with a chance of showers, but a beautiful high near 57. Periods of rain, though, and possibly a thunderstorm at night, and the winds could get pretty gusty at times, the low only hitting 50 degrees. And for Monday morning, showers will end, then a high near 55. Some isolated showers at night with a low down to 33. And for Tuesday, mostly cloudy with a high near 41 degrees. Well, it's not your average holiday trot. The city of Pottsville is gearing up for a turkey run. A nonprofit called Sports Fans Unite Now is holding its first ever turkey run tomorrow. The 5K race begins at 11 a.m. The run will benefit two charities, the St. Jude's Ranch for Children, which takes in neglected, abused, and abandoned kids, as well as the Keystone Wounded Warrior Project, which supports veterans and their families. If you're not up for the 5K, they're also holding a mile-long fun run. And don't let the name deceive you, though. Organizers say participants are allowed to walk that one. But remember, this is a turkey run, not those kind, no. We are having some fun with this. So come in your best-dressed turkey costume. There will be a prize for that. And we're also trying to name the turkey in our logo. So if you go to our website, it's called Run for Fun. 5k.com. It's all spelled out except the number five. And you can actually enter your name for the turkey contest, and there'll be a special prize for that one as well. They'll also raffle off more than 40 prizes, so be sure to test your luck. It all begins Saturday, 11 a.m., Marts Hall in Pottsville. Online registration closed, but you can sign up for the run at Marts Hall. The cost is $30, and the bonus, all over 21 runners who finish the race get a free Yingling Light Lager at Maroons after the race. And let's check the winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you play the daily. One, three, six. The big four, eight, two, four, four. Quinto, four, six, one, seven, one. And the treasure hunt, one, 13, 14, 16, 28. Hope you won. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, the Beaver Meadows Volunteer Fire Company will be holding an autumn tree tree event this Saturday, November 16th. Doors open at 11 a.m. and drawing starts at 7. They'll also be having homemade food, bake sale, 50-50 raffle, and much more. For information, please call 570-233-5199. Residents in Klein Township are reminded that electronic devices of any kind, TVs or computers, are prohibited from being put out for the local trash pickup. And one final announcement, the Greater Shenandoah Area Chamber of Commerce is again sponsoring the Light Up the Park initiative for the holiday season in Girard Park. They're now looking for sponsors for individual trees. Also, Santa will be visiting the park on December 7th. For information about any of these events, please call 570-462-0811. At tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. John S. Dennison Danchissian of Ringtown. Services will be held Monday at 9.30 a.m. at the Stauffer Bresnick Funeral Home. Friends may call Sunday from 6 to 8 p.m. and Monday from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. Mitchell A. Rice of Sugarloaf. Funeral is Monday at 10 a.m. from the Harmon Funeral Home. Friends may call Sunday from 4 to 8 p.m. Anthony P. Bagnata of Milmsville. Arrangements will be announced by the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. James F. Maloney of Freeland. Services will be announced at a later time. And finally tonight, in loving memory of Mildred Elsie Filler, we love and miss you so much from your husband Harold, five children, ten grandchildren, and two great-grandchildren. This is News 13 Sports. Second week of the playoffs, 12th week of high school football, and boy, now you're getting down to championship territory, if you will, and there's some very interesting games online for both tonight and tomorrow, and let's start with that sub-regional in Districts 2, 4, and 11. 
Well, uh, there really isn't anybody left from District 2 as you take a look. It's uh, all District 11. Matter of fact, it's predominantly the Lehigh Valley schools. You got the uh, Eastern Red Rovers taking on number one seed East Stroudsburg South. Now, East Stroudsburg South rolled over Scranton, but let's see what they do now against Easton. That could be a very interesting game tonight up at East Stroudsburg. Other half of the bracket, you got old rivals Parkland and Whitehall squaring off, and the winners will take on each other next Friday night. So there's your final four there. Also in this qualifier, well, uh, you got two teams playing for the District 2 title. You're going to say, huh? How does that happen? Well, remember that Scranton and Wyoming Valley West both lost last week. They have to decide who is the District 2 champion. And so tonight at Wyoming Valley West, you got the uh, Spartans and the Knights squaring off in uh, what is really the consolation prize for that district championship. Game of the weekend, well, it's Triple A. It'll be at Crispin Field tomorrow afternoon. You got the high flying Berwick Bulldogs, who just got by Crestwood last week, taking on Abington Heights, who got a little bit of a revenge against Scranton Prep. This should be a dandy of a football game. This is for the District 2 championship and the right to go on to the state tournament. And I'm sure things will be rocking and rolling at Crispin Field tomorrow. Now, as you take a look, let's look at the um, Eastern Conference playoffs, double A, Northwestern Lehigh and North Schuylkill, single A, the Marion Colts, Mona area do it again. Both teams won big last week, so something's got to give tonight down in Monoy City. Field hockey, yesterday we uh, talked a little bit about Crestwood and Wyoming Sim. Tomorrow, showdown between the two District 11 schools, high noon at Whitehall, just outside Allentown for the gold medal championship in the uh, state of Pennsylvania. Emmaus Lower Dolphin squaring off in AAA field hockey. That one will be the uh, second game down at Whitehall. As far as girls volleyball, well, we've been telling you all week, the Marion Phillies, they're going for state gold themselves. That'll be tomorrow, 11 o'clock. That's the single A girls championship in double A, the Lone Catholic and Fort LaBeouf. So uh, championship weekend in soccer, volleyball and field hockey and we've got some interest in it from uh, both locally and regionally. Last night, the uh, NFL kicked off their Thursday night with uh, a pretty good game. Indianapolis rallied from behind and came away with the win against Tennessee. Teams of local interest for the weekend, the Jets are in Buffalo. The Eagles, who haven't won at home in over a year, get the Washington Redskins. Steelers in Detroit, Green Bay taking on the New York football Giants and the game of the weekend. Kansas City and Denver, of course, Andy Reid's club undefeated. Denver, many consider the best team in the league, so we'll see what happens. That's your Sunday night game. If you're a Wilkes-Barre Scranton Pens fan, a lot to tell you about tonight. They will be on the road at Syracuse tomorrow. They return home and look who's coming to dinner. The Hershey Bears, always exciting when Hershey and Scranton Wilkes-Barre meet, and that should be the case tomorrow as well. We are at the middle of November, and this is the 60th anniversary of the locally famous Fog Game in 1953. Hi, everybody. On Monday, we will talk all about it, the game that took four days to complete in Hazleton. That's a Monday trivia treat. But this is short shot, so let's wrap up this past week. Marion Catholic defeated Muncie at Muncie after three, losing three quarterbacks, Snur, Lucas, and Richards. The Colts started yet another freshman, Ethan Ziggy Kuznetsky, who in his very first varsity started through for 162 yards, including four touchdowns, two in each half. As Marion ripped Muncie 34-13, it was the Colts' first postseason victory in seven years. Kuzinski was nine for 13 with two picks. Anthony Agosti rushed for over 100 yards. The win sets up a rematch with eight and three Mahana area for the Anthracite League Championship. Mahana area defeated Marion in week three of the regular season, 40 to six. The Colts are six and five after an 0-3 start. Other scores of local interest, East Strasburg scored 42 unanswered points in the first half as Nico Patron, who scored five times against Hazel Neri in week nine here, 
duplicated that feat by scoring five TDs against uh, Scranton and, and their fine running back, Scott McCarthy. That 42 0 win over Scranton is a mind bogger. 10 1, Abington Heights 31, Scranton Prep 26. Prep's first loss of the season. Abington's only loss this season was to Scranton Prep. Both teams are 10 1, but only one is still alive AH. And Easton defeated Wyoming Valley West 35 34 when the Spartans went for the win on a two point conversion but failed. The Marion Phillies advance to the state volleyball title game tomorrow at Central York High School. Good luck, Phillies. What else? Penn State lost to Minnesota, in, and Notre Dame lost to Pitt. The Redskins lost. Army lost. Mother of God. I already forgot about last weekend. Will Myers of the Rays won the American League Rookie of the Year award, and Jose Fernandez of the Marlins won the National League Rookie of the Year. Chosen by the Baseball Writers Association, Terry Francona of the Indians and Clint Hurdle of the Pirates were both selected Managers of the Year. 21-3, Max Scherzer of the Tigers, and 16-9, Clayton uh, Kershaw of the Dodgers easily won Cy Young Awards, and Miguel Cabrera of the Tigers won his second straight MVP award, and Andrew McCutcheon of the Pirates was NL MVP. Finally, former All-Pro tight end of the LA Raiders, Todd Christensen, five-time All-Pro and two-time Super Bowl winner, died from complication during liver transplant surgery. He was 57. Make it a good one. Till money be a good sport. Stay loose.